Good morning. Welcome to Western Reserve United Methodist Church on this Worldwide Communion Sunday. Uh, most of your announcements are in the bulletin and have been shown on the screen. The big thing this week is the drive through dinner on October 5th. It's Swiss steak. So that's, I wish I had that truck. Um, anyway, so we hope to see you there, and you know these things sell out fast, so make sure you get here early. Um, do we have any visitors in the congregation this morning? No. Well, welcome to those we know. All right, that's all I have. Does anybody else have an announcement? You have one? Go ahead. You're allowed. Good morning, friends. <laughs> Good morning blessed day to you. I just would like to say that um, the nominations and leadership development committee will meet on Wednesday at 530 this week. And um, leaders, please um, hand in your charge conference documents. They are needed this week. Thank you. Hopefully by, when, by Tuesday, we get them in. Thank you. and join me in the call to worship. Arise, shine, Christ's church has assembled. There are one body with Christ as our head. What kind of body is this? The body of Christ brought together, not by human flesh, but by the sovereign Lord. And who does he call us to be? a people who look not to their own interests, but to the interests of others, those who proclaim the goodness of their Lord. Come, let us worship as one united body.
please join me in the prayer of unison. Lord, we come this morning at the start of another week to worship you, our Alpha and Omega, our beginning and end. You guided, protected, strengthened, and blessed us this past week, for which we thank you and praise you. There is no one like you. There is no one who loves us like you do. No one who knows us like you do. No one so good and so strong, so powerful and compassionate as you. We worship you in glory. You bind us one to another, each of us to you, and all of us to each other. Together, you make us your family, marking us with the same spirit. Thank you. You show us your way, give us your truth, and impart your lie to us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, the one who we trust. Bless you, God our Savior. Amen. Um, if you would turn to page 886 in the hymnal for the World Methodist Social Affirmation. We believe in one God, creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe God, help of our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gift entrusted to us that all may have enough in all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ. Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. Thy kingdom come. time in our service where we express our joys and our prayer concerns. I have been asked to share 
a huge joy this week. Many of you are aware that Steve Simon has been in the hospital most of the past week. Um, as of this point, they still don't know exactly what type of virus or bacterial infection he had contracted. Um, he's still in isolation, and they're still waiting for many of the results to come back from his um, spinal tap. Something we do know is that when he entered the hospital, he was confused. He was running a very high temperature. He definitely was not the man we all know and love. Today, Steve is recovering miraculously. They hit him with every drug they could when they didn't know what they were treating. God's mercy has been with Steve and Kathy. We are so blessed that we have a God that we can turn over our troubles to, and he will carry us through the darkness. Steve is doing better, his temperature is normal, his mind is clear as a bell, and we thank God for that gift. So is there anybody else that has a joy or a concern? Uh, we rejoiced at our 915 toggle service earlier today because our, our praise team leader, Leah Marshall, who has been out the last three months for cancer treatment, was back with us today leading the praise team, and so we were very happy that she returned to us. Is there anybody else that would like to share anything? No. Well, all I can say is, thank you, Lord, for giving us this day and allowing us to be here in the presence of our almighty God. Okay. Uh, could I invite my, is that Malik? Yes, would you come forward for a blessing? Okay, I'll... Continue to give you strength that you will be obedient and kind to all people. Okay, and share and love, share the love of Jesus with everyone, okay? God bless you. Thank you. Our offerings will now be received for the work of God in this church and community.
O God of infinite presence and grace. We thank you for this day, for the many blessings you bestow upon us all. Bless our tithes and offerings this day. May our giving and our living reflect our desire to be on the path that you would be recognized that as faithful servants of the Savior, in whose blessed name we pray. Amen.
Amen. The first reading today comes from 1 Corinthians 10, 14 through 17. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we are many, who are many, are one body, for we all share the one loaf. Please stand for the reading of the gospel from Matthew 21, 23 through 32. Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked, and who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I will also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven? or of human origin. They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the people, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. Then he said, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered, but later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Lord, speak to me that I may speak. Open our ears, our minds, and our hearts to receive your word. Holy Spirit, illumine us. Amen. Friends, today in the liturgical calendar is what is called World Communion Sunday. It is always the first Sunday in October and always a day marked by unity of mind and purpose in which we break the bread and share the cup in celebration of our shared life in the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And also our shared humanity with one another and people around the world. It is an opportunity for Christians to come together in worship and celebrate their shared faith across cultures and borders. It serves as a reminder of the universal nature of Christianity and the call to love and serve one another as members of the global body of Christ. As simple and good as it sounds, in the day-to-day, -day, it's easy to not think about such things, right? How intentional are we about how this gets played out in our daily lives, especially when we seem to have more than enough burdens of our own? Some days, it might be easier to just turn off the television, to not read the newspaper, or skip over certain articles, just taking in enough sound, sound bites to know what's going on, but not enough to move us to action right now. So we have a day like today, not unlike other first Sundays, but a day that calls Christians together on every continent and in every country, in myriads of languages and expressions, to pay attention to one another a little differently. To come to the table with eyes wide open, my brothers, my sisters, saints and sinners, and the difference it all makes. All are welcome, all are forgiven, all are made whole. We ask ourselves, what must I do in order to be in holy communion with others? What are the pressing issues in my time and generation that call to me? We gather to gain strength because to live for Christ is to sometimes suffer, to be wounded, betrayed, and denied, beat down, despised, and rejected. We also gather to reclaim our good heart a renewed mind, a peaceful spirit, and a greater determination. We cannot rest on the laurels of the past. We cannot say, look at what our ancestors did, good or bad, as though that is enough forever. We cannot blame them or hide behind them or stand on their efforts forever. 
No, we are called to serve the present age or calling to fulfill. What does life and faith call me to right here, right now? For we are the body of Christ. Yes, that's what we are. The body of Christ with our wills broken, our selfish desires and ambitions broken, our fears and anxieties broken. We are broken, but we are also resurrected, raised up, infused, set free, determined, for the greater good. We are the body of Christ called to be alive in this church, in this community, in this zone. All too often I am afraid that we love our church for today. We love our church for ourselves. We love our church for what this person, that person can do and get out of it. Not always what we can put into it. And I am not suggesting that that's altogether wrong. We should have some expectations and for ourselves, I suppose, but what we can get out of it for our own selves is a very narrow view. It is too limited for the overall mission and purposes of Jesus Christ. On World Communion Sunday, we expand our vision. Look again and are reminded that we love our church also for those who are hungry and thirsty, physically and spiritually. Those who are afraid, lost and tired. Those who live in the margins of life, those who are friendless. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. And we, though many throughout the earth, we are one body in the one Lord, this one Lord. This is the essence of what we celebrate on World Communion Sunday. The fact that though we are many, though we are diverse, though we live in different countries and speak different languages and even pray, in different ways. We are all one family, one body, one in Christ Jesus. We do have difficulty comprehending this, don't we? It's hard to wrap our heads around this God-sized vision of a world where all humanity is one people. Peaceful and united. One problem might be that we think that our God is too narrow. Without even thinking about it and with no bad intentions, in our lives, God is a he, God is white, God is Methodist, or at least Protestant. God is American, and the least could go on and on and on. And so we forget, 
we forget that God is creator of all. And God is God of all. God is God of the Coptic Christians of Ethiopia, the Catholics in Rome, the Baptists and other denominations, people from all denominations across, not far from where we are located, men, women, and children around the world, even Muslims and Jews, the God we love, God who is the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is the God of all people, all ages and nations and genders. On this day, we celebrate our God and God's big vision. We are reminded of our union with Christians around the world, and we anticipate that day when all of humanity is united as one people, even as Christians are united now. In his first letter to the church at Corinth, a portion of which we heard earlier, the Apostle Paul explains to the Christian, the new Christian community, that more than anything else, the bread and wine shared in communion is symbolic of our unity as the family of Christ. For Paul, participation in the Lord's Supper is fundamental, defining acts, act of be, acts of the believing community. Like no other activity, this shared meal clearly embodies each believer's relation to Christ and to one another with pristine clarity. At the crux of Paul's argument is that those who sit at the Messiah's table share in his life. The life that is the human embodiment of the one true God. Because there is one loaf, well, this morning we have many loaves representative of, of our diversity, but we will, partake in, we will partake from one loaf. So because there is one loaf and because all believers share that one loaf, they, they though many, are one body. This means that the Lord's Supper is not, nor can it ever be, just another meal. It is not just another get-together of believers. For Paul, this meal is a definitive action that stands at the heart of the life of faith. You all know the importance of shared meals, right? I remember evening meals with my parents and siblings. The news was always on nearby, which I thought was boring, but which was the source of a lot of conversation. The dinner table is where we all shared about our day and listened to one another without interruption. It is where we learned, I learned about current events and politics and appropriate table etiquette. Talking about that, well, I'll share how punished how I got punished one day because, you know, there were spots, there were many of us and 
and there were little guns coming on as well. So there were stations where we would go and wash our hands before heading to the table. And I shouted, you can start without me. You can be. And then when I got to the table, I was punished. I was deprived of dessert. Yes, yummy, yummy, yummy dessert. So friends, and ever since I was just a little kid, we always celebrated our, the events of our lives, whether happy or sad ones. So we gathered and we always created memories, memories, many of which involve laughing, so hard that we end up crying. Yet despite the wonderful experiences so many of us have had, have shared around the table, we have somewhat lost an appreciation for its importance in so many aspects of our lives. In Paul's day, Sharing table, dining with someone was the primary social symbol of acceptance, of belonging, and of mutuality. A symbol which unfortunately has faded in the ensuing millennia. We barely even pause to eat at the same time anymore, much less share meals with family and friends only on occasions. And do you know the statistics show that children and teens having together with parents and family is a strong predictor of academic success, psychological adjustments, and lower rates of alcohol abuse and drug abuse, early sexual behavior, eating disorder and risk of suicide. And yet, the polls are showing that the time families spend together around the dining table has declined as much as one third in recent years. Many of us probably recognize that trend in our own households, whether married or single with families or without families. We spend time sitting in the car for drive throughs waiting on food to be prepared than we do in our, at our table for fellowship. So friends, despite the centrality that Paul and so many others have placed on the practice of Holy Communion in the lives of believers, I don't necessarily think we view it that way in our own lives. And Paul picked up on that as he looked at the church at Corinth. He saw that this Lord's Supper didn't hold any greater significance in the lives of the young Christians than the sacrifices they formerly, and in some cases even still, made at the altar of pagan gods. We might not make sacrifices at pagan altars, but I think the significance of the Lord's Supper is often lost on us in other ways. Month after month, we come to the Lord's table and we share the bread and the juice. But what does it mean to us? The founder of Methodism, John Wesley, taught us that the Lord's Supper is a means of grace, a means of grace, a special way by which we experience God's grace in our lives. And yet, as we receive the bread of life and the cup of forgiveness, how often do we 
pause and reflect and allow the full meaning of that to sink in. Even as we partake in the bread, the juice, and that fills our stomachs. Do we really experience God's grace in a special way when we receive this meal? Or do we just take it for granted like we do with so many other things in our life? God's grace is so amazing. It is an amazing and a powerful thing. It draws us into God's presence even when we are not aware of it. When we call upon God with penitent, repentant hearts, it is God's grace that forgives us and begins the process of making us new. Through the Lord's Supper, we are, in essence, taking God's grace into us in a tangible way. Have you experienced communion in that way? Do you ever walk away after taking the after partaking in, that, in the sacrament of the Holy Communion, do we walk away feeling refreshed, restored, renewed? And then about this whole unity thing, Paul teaches us that because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of one loaf. Monthly, weekly, and even daily Christians around the world partake in the sacrament of the Holy Communion. Some use crackers, wafers, bread. Might, some others might use wine instead of juice. Some may kneel to receive the bread and juice. Some may drink from the common cup. I'm not telling you anything new. The bread may be dipped, but it, 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 is, it may be called a sacrament or a memorial meal, the Eucharist or love feast. The people coming to the table may be saint or sinner, brown or black, gay and, or straight, republican or democrat or independent, young and old, male or female. They are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Our sharing of the common loaf in this common meal, says Paul, signifies our unity in Christ above all. And that is what World Communion Sunday is all about. World Communion Sunday and the Lord's Supper itself, my friends, means mean nothing if we don't take God's grace into the world and promote unity beyond this table. We all know how easy it is in our modern society to divide. We know how easy it is to hate and bully, to separate ourselves and point out people as the other. But our time at the Lord's table calls us to a different way of living, a way that rises above all hatred and division, a way of peace and unity, a way of grace and love that reflects the very love of Jesus Christ himself. This shared meal, a very embodiment of Jesus' own sacrifice, is at the essence of who we are as Christ's followers. 
So, my friends, as you come to receive the Lord's Supper this morning, as we share in this meal today with Christians around the world, come, come ready to experience God's grace. Allow that grace to wipe away feelings of otherness and division and let and then let that grace mold you and shape you and unite you and unite us all as one in the body of Christ. Amen. The altar is now ready and... Um, we are all invited for prayer. Anyone who would like prayers, um, whether they'd like to commit or recommit themselves to Christ, whether they have anything weighing them down, anything they would like to bring to the altar, you are all invited to come. Come and ask Jesus to lift our burden. Jesus invites us all to come and lay our burdens at the altar. Come, come. This is a special invitation. Oh Lord God, we come this day to you with hearts filled with gratitude for your many blessings upon us. So we come to worship and adore you. We present to you our hymns of praise and we want to exalt your name this day. We have so many things on our hearts that are heavy and sometimes we are crushed. So we are drawn away by problems and cares. So we ask you to heal our spirits and open our hearts. Help us, O oh God, to be your faithful disciples. God of mercy, we ask you to help us to remember the words of encouragement that you offer to us. We know that your love is always with us never far from us. Even when we turn our backs and we depart from our commitments, Lord. Forgive us for all acts of cowardice and self-centeredness that draw us from time to time away from you. Heal our spirits and reveal our lives. You have placed us in this global community with where illness, oppression, greed, fear, anger may abound. O oh God, place us again on the path of peace for all your children. So we pray for our church family, the children of our church and communities. May we nurture them 
care for them in ways that exemplifies you and glorifies you, God. Bless our ministries. Bless those who faithfully serve you. We lift up our loved ones this morning and give you thanks and praise that Steve is recovering, is recuperating. We give you thanks and praise, oh God, for the joy of healing. Oh God, for John and others who experience day by day your healing touch. Continue to pour your love and grace and mercy over them, oh God. We praise you also for the recovery of Pastor Doug. We praise your name and give you thanks. For those who are awaiting surgery, we ask you to be ahead of the team and bless, replace their hands, the hands of those who are doing the surgeries. Replace their hands with yours, oh God. Help us to experience your comfort for those who are going through bereavement, who are grieving the loss of their loved ones. We pray for the Bartholomews and the Bartholomews, the Brills and the Hamiltons and the Irwins and others, oh God, the Pellins family and others who are going through this. We lift up John who has lost a friend. Give them all your comfort and peace. We pray, O oh God, for all people and nations across the globe who are experiencing natural disasters, especially the recent flooding in the Northeast area. O oh God, make us those who bring messages and actions of hope and healing and faith. Give us courage and nourish our spirits with this worldwide communion of bread and wine. Strengthen us to truly be your witnesses this day and all our days. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. We will now partake, uh, participate in the sacrament of the Holy Communion, and I'll ask Lynn to come and help us. And our stewards will come forward as well to help us gather. We will gather around the table this time, and um, our ushers will direct you. We come for kneeling, and those who would like to stay standing, they are welcome to do whatever they are able to. And if there are persons in the pews, we will come to you for the sacrament. The table set before us is the table of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ who invites with his love and great mercy all those who desire to live in peace with God and with their neighbor. As a beloved community, let us confess our offenses. Let us pray in silence. Amen. It is truly just to give you thanks, divine creator of new ways. You form this diverse creation with your creativity and joy and called it good. You also created us with tender, loving care so that we could be your image in the world. But we strayed from the way, O oh God, and we began to forget what your image in us looked like 
and we turned our eyes from you. Thanks be to you, O holy God, that you do not give up on your creation. You forge a new pathway where there are no pathways. You lift up your servants, both men and women, and forge a new people filled with hope and purpose. And so with all your angels and archangels, we praise you with this unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth is you. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and holy is the one who came to make straight the path and to prepare highways of love and peace. Jesus, the day laborer of justice, Jesus, the strong arm of liberation, Jesus, the sojourner who walked with the despised and marginalized, with the laughable and the ones who were not counted. That same Jesus walks with us today, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, forging the reign of God where equity is created and diversity celebrated in one holy body. For his message of love, this Jesus was betrayed, tortured, and given over to be put to death. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus met with his disciples, men and women, to celebrate the Passover feast. He took the bread, blessed, broke, and shared it with his disciples, saying, this is my body broken for you and for the world. And he also took the cup and said, this is the cup of a new covenant made in my blood. And now, O oh God, accept the sacrifice which we offer to you through the great mercy that you have shown in Jesus Christ for us in union with all your saints that have forged new pathways of justice and peace in your name. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is gone with us again. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit over all those in this place and over this bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we can be that same body for the world. Make us one united body, one committed body, one body forging new pathways of peace and justice. Through Christ Jesus, all honor, glory are yours forever. Amen. Now, with the assurance of being family, siblings, all of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Because there is one bread, we too, though we are many, are one body in Christ. The bread that we break is the communion of the body of Christ. The cup for which we give thanks is the communion of the blood of Christ. Friends, the table is ready. The feast is prepared. Come with joy to the table of the Lord.
women commit your lives to Christ and serve faithfully in the world. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, this special communion reminds us of being members of a global community. We have feasted at your table. As you have nourished us, may we go into the world to bring a feast of peace and hope to others, listening with loving ears and acting with loving hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
from the Lord. Now I'll go into the world offering hope and peace to all people you meet. Be involved in justice and healing ministries in the name of the Lord. Go now in peace and serve. Amen. Amen.